Hey, well, welcome to the Dream Labs with Dr. Contrast Live. Uh, really interesting uh, day today, I think. Um, just to kind of uh, switch gears a little bit. And by the way, Doug, uh, if you're there, uh, really great to have you on board. Doug, I uh, hope you're doing well. It's always nice to have you in the, in the process here. Hey, Shadow Man, how are you? Good to see you, Doctor. Um, hope all is well with you, and uh, and I uh, look forward to seeing you more. Hoping when you come back in the office. But you know, I just thought um, after yesterday's, or probably Tuesday stream, I thought you know we've done a lot of sketch rendering work, done a lot of historical things, some aircraft and uh, transportation product work and the and uh, and the like. But um, some recent things have come up here, and I might be uh, might be involved in doing some development work for a group here uh, in town. Um, um, for uh, doing some logo development work. I'm not quite sure if that's gonna take place yet or not, but I thought, you know, it'd be kind of a nice refresher to go back for me to go back into the files here and look at what uh, we've done in the past. So I thought I'd put together a real brief portfolio and hope you bear with me here. Um, this is more and more like an anthology of uh, things done over the past, uh, only maybe two or three years. And primarily when I was working with an architectural firm here in town, doing both architecture, interior space, and uh, logo development pieces. So, hey, hi, Die Hard, how are ya? Good to have you on board, man. Thank you. A little bit of a different change of pace today, and uh, just kind of pull back a little bit before the holiday and um, uh, go back through some what I refer to as a port. This is a minor portfolio. My goodness, I could not believe when I was going through the uh, the archives of uh, what was being uh, taken care of from the. Uh, corporate side, private side, uh, and conclusive um, conglomerate side of life for de uh, logo development. I've been all over the place. It's been a real journey, but a lot of things learned too. And I, I think one of the biggest things I've learned from going through uh, systems um, with logo development was how diverse it is to begin to really put together programs that really fit a community's needs, an individual's needs, or a corporate need, or a racing team, whatever it might be. Uh, really difficult uh, set of circumstances. I don't mean that to be critical. It's not difficult from the point of view of um, executing it, but the difficulty is getting input and uh, and elements of, uh, of concerns and yeas and nays about what the character of the community or, what the, or this image should look like. So as, you go, as I go through these today, I'll uh, try to do the best I can to explain very simply some of the uh, uh, background story behind developing it or developing them, and we'll go from there. And then while I'm at it too, before I forget here, before the rest of the uh, stream is completed, uh, uh, I'm, I'm really busy in the process now of kind of expanding some things here um, uh, on the Tuesdays and Thursdays um, and really starting to look at uh, maybe getting more into the uh, advanced conceptual kind of things. Uh, maybe some more um, really, really uh, uh, spooky, out of the ordinary, advanced um, um, empathic design concept sketches for yacht design or for speed boats or catamarans, things of that nature, uh, really interesting. Uh, um, so I'm putting together a whole uh, um, library of things that maybe to look at down the line in terms of uh, uh, not only sketch rendering, but maybe illustration work or final pieces. So I'll keep you posted on that as we go through the uh, situation after the holiday here. But again, this is day, this day I thought we'd just kind of pull back a little bit and show you a little bit of histrionics of uh, what takes place when you develop some logo work. and. Um, I'm going to start here with a program that was done uh, for the uh, tri-state region here. Hey, Chip, how are you? Thanks very much for joining me. Hope you're doing well, Chip. And uh, we're going to go through a little bit of a different pace today with um, just a whole litany of sketches on what I refer to the portfolio of logo sketches. And um, um, pardon me for being redundant here for those of you who are already tuned in. But over the course of time, uh, these things were done independently. And also when I was working on an architectural firm as a consultant, uh, doing everything from interior space to architecture exterior, um, just uh, <laughs> rocket power logo design, don't I wish. Uh, just very simple studies in terms of working with communities, individuals, corporate conglomerates, small businesses, large businesses. Um, had the privilege of working with a lot of different individuals putting together logos for them or a character of a logo for them to choose from and to put an implementation for the community or personal use, etc. So I'm going to start here with the, with the, with the tri-state piece. It was just with the um, Ohio State the Planning Com Ohio, the State of Ohio Planning Commission. But it was actually a tri-state piece, and they wanted the three states involved in the thing. So I started doing some, uh, put a header on it. Uh, of course, was um, the I wanted OPC. That was their header. But I just started putting a series of sketches together that might might be involved in terms of, of um, like city planning, uh, rural planning, uh, industrial planning. So these sketches are really fast little thumbnail sketches, not quite the scale, but these are these are interesting search studies. Um, and every every category we go through here today, we'll uh, outline it. It's neat to know that when I go through, when I went through the process with these different groups, it was always interesting to me that they never wanted to see any hardline stuff. 
and the finished uh, graphic pieces. And I'm not uh, criticizing that approach at all. I think it's, it's necessary. You'll see some examples that, of that uh, throughout the course of this uh, uh, presentation. But uh, I think what they wanted to see was the imagination of uh, what can, what, how lucid can we get with this thing? What are we trying to tell the story? We want to see a development of it started here, went to this, went to this, and an evolution of getting a final study down. So almost every, uh, I'm gonna take that back, every case I've worked with, it's always started with some thought concept sketches, the ideation side of cycle, putting down rough ideas and, and, and tuning them in and refining them as we go through the process. So this is the first pass of looking at um, this tri-state program for this high, this uh, planning commission. Um, and their tagline was setting the course for planning. So we try to put together like riverscapes and, and, uh, and different uh, images of, of elements of work within that logo piece. That was the first one down here. Let's kind of go through the process. Then the triad, for example, going back into a very triangular piece to look at uh, uh, both city, rural, and then the industry, uh, variations of the state of Ohio, and then, and then into Louisville, and then Indiana. So was, that was a tri-state right there, Ohio, Indiana, and, and the Kentucky. And again, it was interesting, too, that in the conversation during this whole process, uh, one of the conversations that came out of th this set of sketches was, that's interesting, what is this guy doing? I said, well, there's a there's the old riverboat series that gone through the Mississippi River and down into, into the Southland and back in of commerce, back and forth. And one individual in that group, the group, who was a chairman of one of the uh, commerce committees in the state of Kentucky, so that'd be kind of neat to see what would happen if you did a riverboat theme along with what you've got here. So um, again, I took off on that kind of a process. Again, again, let me stop here for a moment. That's to me the great engagement of working with individuals. That you throw out a sketch, you put down a thumbnail study, or a real rapid study, and Shadow knows this, and so does Doug, um, and also I'm sure Die Hard as well. Chip, all of you are familiar with this. You put down an idea, and sometimes it hits, oh, this is really neat, or also, oh, man, no, let's not go that route. Let's go. But it engages conversation and, 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 and indulges people to come right back and say, boy, you know, this is this could be a possibility. What about tweaking this or adjusting that? So th this is one of the nice things about this logo process that I went through in this little portfolio I want to show you today. It all comes about by human contact and conversation about likes and dislikes. That doesn't mean they love it. It doesn't mean they're going to follow up with it, but they give you input to give you some direction. And I think that to me is inspiring. And I think the inspiring part of it is really respecting people's individuals. Because after all, um, almost every logo I'm working with here, and especially in this campus, this is a small section of things I've been doing as far as logo development. But every spectrum of this is, is always been come, has always come back down to one simple process, and that's respecting other individuals' ideas. Now, you might have an idea, great, but somebody else might have a better idea. And if that's the case, respect it and then work with that and develop it through for that uh, for that purpose. So let's move along here. That was uh, and then this sketch started, oh, that's kind of neat. What's, what are the two stacks represent? Well, maybe a riverboat theme. So I think they're next here. So from that little study, went on and said, oh, what do we put together some pretty neat looking things with uh, like the old riverboat stack, the old steamroller kind of deal, uh, steamship coming down the river and so forth. And again, playing that three-state that three state system in the base of Ohio, Indiana, and uh, Kentucky. And again, the different character altogether, it gave it a different presence, which I thought was pretty interesting. So again, again, thumbnail sketches very quickly uh, put together based on that little concept sketch about the riverboat theory. And then I went back a little further and more more detail with it in terms of let's use the, the real McCoy. Let's put the riverboat in there. And again, the tri-state piece and then still that say of the course of planning, which was their, their tagline. But it was a lot of fun um, putting this together. Notice how it all started with very generic, and also it became more and more specific as it went down the line to get the process down here. So, really unique set of circumstances. Let me, pardon me, I just get these sketches lined up here. We'll keep them in a, a neat stack. Um, um, and I think the final approach they took was something of this nature here. It was a little bit of the riverboat, the tri-state piece, and then their tagline underneath it. Now, um, uh, just interesting, again, the final setup. And when this was presented, uh, hey, creative uh, Dave, hey, Doc, it's great to finally join you and your live stream. You know how much about that. Do you know much about dynamic symmetry? Um, yeah, a little bit. Uh, how can we help you there, uh, creative Dave? Welcome, creative create. Creative Dave, how are you? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I've gone through some things of that nature. So, um, uh, but again, this uh, today's stream is all about just logo development and uh, putting concept sketches together from a very minor portfolio. And again, I can't stress enough. I mean, what I'm going to show you today is just a, like a chip of the iceberg. I've gone through my portfolio files. And my goodness, they're all over the place. They're sketch after sketch after sketch, final after final after final, uh, over the course of time. It's been a real privilege for me to work with these people as well. And putting together this, uh, little systems and the like. So this is what we're after. Um, and again, that, that was the final little series of sketches here. And I'm going to switch gears here. Um, that was for a planning commission for Tri-State. And then that was one pattern. And now let's kind of move these over a little bit. And we'll kind of 
create some space as we go down the line here. This was done for a, um, a housing development or a community development here. It's called Grace Glacier Ridge, um, out of state. But again, interesting how they wanted more of a heraldic shield approach, and uh, th that wasn't brought up in conversation. I just started to take off on this. And as soon as I got the assignment, I started looking at, that, for example, um, Glacier Ridge, putting together maybe the mountainscape and some of the, some of the chevrons, again, some of the little features of the architecture and some of the landscaping pieces in there. But again, just a different variation of the theme. Notice how the whole format changed from being very, very rural and uh, state-related to something more specific in terms of heraldic shield or, or a nomenclature again putting pieces in the, in, the, in the place that represent both community and the landscape or features of the countryside etc so there's was, there was a sketch there that's how it started and I moved along and a little more specific with uh, some of the sketches let's put these side by side so you might be able to see where the relationship is I started with that let's plate one came right down the line with a series of getting a little more chevron related but I think they like the idea let me move these down just a bit here how's that is any better they like the concept of being able to make it more almost like a heraldic shield where it's almost uh, um, a nomenclature of family clan or that uh, kind of character uh, personality so just nice to, nice to get the feedback and we get these guys lined up here there we are so that was that was part of this that's how they started and again, these sketches are very very quick um, they don't take an awful lot of time I, I, I'm, I'm prone to think in terms of oh let's, let's start with this and a little bit of that move it around a little bit and but yet just not lose the the impact of what's um, the, the concept or what the what the end goal should be but 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 expand the variation so it doesn't become oh yeah we just made maybe change the line an eighth of an inch maybe we added something here and, and took that out of it i mean i'm opening it up all the time and uh, while i'm at it too while well, opening up what i mean by that is and, and, and a lot of times um, many cases throughout the entire presentation here all these logos make final presentations to individuals um uh, let's see i mean let me finish this thought here dave i'll get it with it we're finished with individuals for example making the presentation one-on-one -on -one, it's so helpful because you lay down an idea you lay them all out there and then you start picking up information from the the group and you start re rescheduling certain things or resketching some of the concept work so let me get dave's uh, question here uh how do you approach your compositional arrangement when designing your logos how do you arrange the various elements that's a good question uh, dave i think um <clears throat> There's really not a set pattern to it. I mean, I'll pick up, for example, these sketches and post all sketches so that you'll see here today uh, are a product of laying down, going to a meeting, for example, with a group involved, whether it's a consortium or a group or a small firm, a large firm or individual, uh, as we started, uh, started, stated earlier in the stream, they will sit down and have a conversation about what the goals are. So I'll take notes, for example, on what uh, some of the elements might be in terms of we want to highlight the community, we want to highlight the rural side of it, we want to, uh, the architectural pieces, maybe it's small town America. So those little clues become part of the process of putting it all together, as you well know, Dave. So when that comes together, these sketches are a result of that, for example. In, in this case, it was a very creative glacier community, very captive area that had a lot of mountainscape, uh, had a lot of uh, rural, uh, 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 very distinct um, uh, Tuscany type architecture. So I'm picking up on those notes and the very rivers and streams going through the property itself. So all the notes where you'll see some of the rivers and streams and landscape and some of the chevrons of maybe family crest heroics and so forth and headers. That is how I arrange those um, uh, compositional pieces. Does that help to answer your question, Dave, or is that still a little bit on the abstract side here? Um, so it comes down to com uh, real good communication in the very beginning of the meetings and working with the individuals. You get you pick up on clues about what they're after. Then I begin to factor that into the actual design itself. Uh, yeah, hey, thanks very much, David. Appreciate it. That's a great question. So that's how it all starts. It starts with human interaction. So let me get rid of these guys here. So, yeah, and again, notice, let's do this. There's a set of frame, and here's the final. There's the final study. A place called home. Um, notice I picked up on the architecture, uh, some of the monumental pieces in town some of the actual, the actual community itself, um, landscaping and so forth, the rural side of it all, very, very country-like. And again, um, some of the area, some of the certain unions and counties that were involved in the area, and also the, the last monument and then the architecture, very, very, very civic looking state house. So again, those combinations came about as a result of all this stuff came first, let me put this up on top. All those conversations, notice they're all little features in there, then we came right back to the final piece, and there it was. There's there's Glacier's uh, last shot at it. I hope I'm making sense here, guys. Is this helping at all? 
coming together good so let's get these out of the way and it just changes uh, let's let's switch gears here it's really interesting now we go back to this this is interesting too um this is done for the community of obets um a very interesting set of circumstances where the athletic commission came to me and said well you know we need a new logo for our uh, youth uh, a athletic program that's going to be soccer basketball baseball uh, maybe lacrosse uh, not quite sure yet but i just started a series of sketches based on and they were very specific about the fact we want to have the actual vehicle or the actual um, uh, sport abuse or the, the product abuse um, in the logo itself with some sort of a nice arrangement of how we put it all together um, and then captivating the obits uh, piece into it. So I started with these are ballpoint, these are ballpoint pen sketches. Again, just putting a combination together of, uh, of themes and studies. And again, back to what Dave's question was earlier about uh, composing these things, uh, try to keep it very uh, random, then very orderly, then back to order again, and just kept it very, very clean and simple. And then like the, the metal chevron and remember the universal um, uh, tie into it all, for example, and then playing that into the obits piece itself, like a scallop of some sort of wrap it all together. So there was that one that's how it started and we went into these for example um much more state related but they want to go back into uh, uh yeah we're an obis but it's a state related system so maybe it's a part of a chevron or a metal type piece uh, with the state of ohio and then the location of central ohio and the actual piece itself and then some of this uh, again variations on theme uh just explore 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 and there's really no set formula as far as oh let's uh I like or dislike this or that. I'm, I'm always really more tuned into variation on theme, opening up the spectrum and really looking at a lot of possibilities and then letting the individuals that I'm working with and for begin to take the direction and then pick up from there. So there's, there's plate two. And then another variation, keeping it simple, maybe star related, uh, uh, getting more specific with maybe the star side of life and, and the American flag banner inside of that. Again, notice the change of pace in almost all three pieces. Uh, very, very athletic uh, equipment related, very state related, and then last but not least, very star or individual related. So again, these all came about as a result of conversations with the gang, go through a sketch series of pencil sketches, go make a presentation, come back and refine back and make your presentation come back and refine so that was that set here there we are and then last but not least back to a final little gang study of what was all put together i think it was interesting too they came back to this theme about the um, die hard i like how much of a spectrum your variations hit mine usually hit are just tiny changes that barely make a difference well you know that, that that's still pretty solid though die hard i mean i wouldn't be critical of that approach at all i think you might be in a situation where that may be part of the uh, Part of the architecture you're trying to solve or to work with um so i wouldn't i wouldn't demean that i think when i get into things such as this um and it's more corporate and, I, and i'm not saying that to be please don't misunderstand the context here but i've been working with these guys over the history of this portfolio series i'm showing you it's been interesting because a lot of stuff uh, oh creative dave thanks for your input doc i ask these questions because i'm an architect graduate student I always based my design work on grids. I find that the grid axis is arbitrary. Yeah, I think mean, that's good, Dave. I think um, uh, that's, that's super. Uh, if, you, if that becomes a help meet, wonderful. I mean, take advantage of that. But even in that grid system, expand a little bit and begin to make some variation changes and go into more theme, uh, thematic or adventuresome approaches. Sometimes, and I'll say this too, if it helps at all for Dave and uh, Die Hard both. Oftentimes, um, I'll go through the variation of themes and I'll make a mistake. So, hey, that, that doesn't belong. Then all of a sudden, wait a minute, that maybe belongs because I can, if I can adjust it and tune it and get outside my comfort zone, it opens up a whole new set of variations on theme, which is going back to what Dyer's comment here in the question is he has, you know, I like how much spectrum my variation said. I just don't really fall in love with any one given theme. I, I, when I work with clients, and I think uh, hopefully a shadow could be my, my, my witness here, when I work with clients, no matter big or small, I respect all of them. And what I don't do is try to dictate to them what I think is right. I'm always listening to tune in what, what they think they want to, uh, what they feel the system should look like or the process should be um, dealt with. And I think that's the most important part of it all. And I think that's what gives a variation of theme um, and opening up the doors of possibilities to them much more exciting. Uh, and notice, I have a little note here. This is the final concept they worked with, for example, the diamond variation. Not so much a baseball, but I think they used the play obets and they used it, it went back to the actual vehicles themselves baseball, soccer, basketball, etc. Uh, and this was the final theme that they picked on to work with. So that was active. Uh, that's, that finishes that. Up. And this is another variation 
Uh, let me get these out of the way here so we're not cluttering up the table. Is there, this goes back to, again, another sports-oriented piece. Um, I was approached by a city that uh, had an uh, international competition, or probably a national competition, come in for their baseball league. And I thought, that's kind of fun. So um, uh, it was a tournament, uh, a logo site. It was a big, big uh, national tournament. All these teams came in from around the country, and they wanted something to represent the baseball diamond, um, the actual um, USSA softball appreciation. Uh, National Invitational Tournament and so forth, all these pieces and what the dates were. So I think that was kind of neat. I started with these sketches. Um, uh, again, no input from them. Um, I just uh, said, okay, that's the format. It's baseball. It's a national tournament. Now let's put together some sketches. So there was phase one. And let me step right and lay these out here. There's a second variation there. If you get these guys in, but they're just kind of, again, a little bit of a different variation on theme and how it all came together. Uh, came back, this initial start, and then page two, a bit more specific to some of the some of the captive logo pieces that might be involved in some of the team systems. And right back to the baseball theme again with the diamond, the bat, and the glove, and the dates, and so forth, and uh, just neat stuff. And let's see if I can put these together with this one. Then I came back to another family of sketches here, which which was there. Uh, I hope those are climbing up on it. I hope they're not covering up this. Uh, some. But again, notice that the, the range, uh, back to Dyer's question there about how much spectrum there is. And then, uh, for example, Dave, the grid system. Um, I, I hope I can say this properly without the, any inflection of, of finger pointing. I'm not doing that at all. I mean, I respect how the approach is here, but I've never really relied. I just, I'm one of those individuals that once I go, I just go. And <laughs> only way I can say it, I'm not restricted by the fact that, gee, we better be careful to not do this and be careful. When you get into the careful cycle, that's when all of a sudden tragedy hits. I think when you begin to cut the ties and begin to explore whether it's grid systems or spectrum system, open it all up and just see what happens when it comes together. Uh, question from Shadow. So when you work on a logo, you start complex and then work down to a simplified version or things like that. Yeah, I think, that, yeah, I, I, that's how I work with it, um, Shadow. I, I, open up the, I open up the doors of the floodgates of just go really, really, really start really, really um, over, the, over the edge, so to speak, putting a lot of information into it to give the client a, a sense of, uh, oh, I see, I never thought of that. Uh, that's interesting. And then once they see certain things, begin to take that whole that whole spectrum or that envelope and begin to reduce it down and get into a finite uh, for uh, uh, final print work, graphics and the like. So that's how we deal with it. That so, yeah, those are the, the theme sketches. And there's the final. There it is. That's what we ended up with. And uh, I'm going to proud to tell you here that uh, I had the privilege of working on this one with uh, Josh Baker. Uh, the guy is an absolute genius in terms of uh, graphic work. He can take a sketch and turn it into a piece of art like this. Uh, just phenomenal stuff. Uh, so, Josh, if you're listening and if you see it later, uh, boy, I really want to thank you for a great job done here. That went into the national system. They loved it and um, had a very successful uh, um, combination of things to do to, to, to do as a result of working with that. So let me get these guys lined up here. We'll go to another program. See, that started there, there, and there's the final. This was fun. Um, I get into a lot of different situations where this was done for a very large conglomerate of uh, uh, automobile uh, um, dealerships, for example, in the Midwest, it was Bedford. It, boy, I mean, they, they were they had everything from Ferrari to Bentley to Lamborghini to Kia. I mean, it was all over the map. So they wanted a new logo for their site. That's a very very large. I think there was about 24 uh, dealerships uh, involved in the entire complex. It was very interesting. So I started with these speed forms, just putting line weights together in terms of just very simple gestures. Made the presentation. That, oh, that's that's cool. But can we go a little bit further with some of the concept work? Yeah, we can do that. Now let's get back into like RPM stuff and some gauge work and instrumentation, and getting into things like you know uh, checkered flags, roundabouts, and so forth. Uh, getting into RPM systems. You know, Bedford Auto Mall. You know, that's what the name of the process was. Uh, yeah, just a lot of stuff. Uh, thanks, such a lot of fun stuff. Just opening it all up in terms of not being confined to. Well, you know, to me, let's go back to this for a moment. This is a very generic start, and I did not know this client very well, uh, but I got to know him very, very well throughout the entire process. And I thought, you know, I'd, I'll start very, 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 very safe, very simple, the old-fashioned, the thick and thin, uh, suggestive uh, innuendo piece, and let's see how well they respond to that. These were well liked, but when I went to this setup, I was saying, now this is more active. This is kind of fun stuff here. So I, I agree. Um, so again, exploratory sketches, nothing really settled in yet. I kept going here with another family of studies, and I went, right now, well, now we really started to see, and I'll be honest with you, this is, this is a horrible thing to admit. But this whole family of sketches, I went back in the archives of uh, O.W. Bentley, and I started stealing his logo. That's awful, but nonetheless, uh, if it's great, 
and uh, they don't know it. He's been long gone. Man, steal it. Have fun with it. <laughs> That's what I did here. So, <laughs> um, but I, a variation of the theme. It wasn't quite a, a knockoff, but adding little things to it. But I, I utilize that, that that famous Bentley B, and then just put it in the processor. And uh, thank goodness they weren't uh, too familiar with the Bentley logo. They knew the Bentley automobile, but not the logo. So I kind of lucked out in that sense. But again, variation again. Going back to emblematic materials, and uh, again, changing the paradigm, getting the wing systems, much more Art Nouveau kind of thing. Uh, it's, it's fine stuff. It's just fun, really. And I put it in the context. Um, so to give me a little bit of an entryway piece here, I think, yeah, this is what it might look like in terms of context. Some of the logos, uh, for example, the vehicle itself, some of the dealerships in the background, a little bit of an entry fence with a little bit of uh, signage on it. And to give them an idea of what we're looking for, like an S, um, Aston Martin Zagato's, no, it might be Aston Martin, it could be Rolls Royce, could be whatever. But uh, just taking a look at putting in the complex here and to put in some sort of context about what that, that might look like for signage. Notice it started out, for example, doing a logo. They liked the logo series, which um, I think they came back with the one we, they picked on, uh, they, they selected was this. Uh, went back to that guy right there um, with a variation on Bentley. That, they really liked that with the, the Bentley Automall involved in it. But they also uh, came back. This is an interesting thing that happens, um, and I hope I can say this in the right context, so please um, don't misunderstand. If you do a good job for a client and you really hit all the marks on the first one through, you'll find this to be really true, that they like the work so much. In this case, the Bedford um, uh, Board of Directors said, you know, we really love the logo studies. Could you do some signage for us and maybe some atmosphere for us and the actual, uh, what uh, what an entry, entrance way might look like, or a landmark or a gateway might look for us? So it opened up more uh, opportunities for business opportunities. I think that's the great thing about um, the, the power of visual impact. Not these sketches, uh, just the thinking process, whether it's Die Hard or Dave, whomever it might be, Shadow. It's how, it's how you treat your customer and uh, how you work with them in terms of delivering the goods. And then once you deliver those goods, yeah, think big. You're actually correct, uh, Shadow. Think big. It's not just a logo. It's what is it, what's happening around that logo that's going to open it up for them to make a much more successful business study. So that was it for the, uh, the logo group. And uh, there it is. Um, now, this is a fun one. This is a lot of fun. Uh, let me just kind of switch gears for a second. I had the privilege years ago. I'm working with uh, Honda uh, out of California, and they were looking at a whole new, I agree with the last statement entirely. Yeah, absolutely, uh, no question, Dave, thank you very much. Um, if you respect that, that opens up. If you respect that client base and you start to work within that spectrum, not only within it, but open it up to them so they can see the versity, versatility of your skill set, and they do a good job, all of a sudden they ask you for more and more and more. And I think that's one of the things, I'll say this, and those of you who know me, I know the spirit which I'm going to say this. Uh, I've never done a nickel's worth of advertising for the last 40 years of my career, not one. And it's all come back a thousandfold, which I'm really grateful for because, as I said in the very beginning of the stream, I'm number one concern for me is always respect my client. No matter what the skill set is, I respect them enormously. I'll listen to them, I'll deliver the goods, but I'll be bold enough to say once I get to know them, hey, you know, have you thought about this? Next thing you know, oh yeah, that, that's let's try that, that's great. So all that to say, thanks very much, David. I appreciate that commentary um, very well. Good timing there, Dave, thank you. This is an interesting one. So um, I get called into a meeting with this uh, new group uh, in California called the Honda Home Group. They were going to develop a whole new housing system, but they had a hard time finding a logo for it. So th I brought this sketch along because I thought it was really kind of humorous in a sense, but so truthful. Um, after about a two hour meeting, I walked up to the whiteboard and I took a black marker and just scribbled a little like a lightning streak across the top of the thing. And put the Honda underneath it and the guy went, that's it. That's simple as that. <laughs> just that, <laughs> wow. Um, I said, okay, because we started to notice going around it. And I just said, and all of a sudden, I think someone in the room said, what about just roof line study? So I just put together this little thumbnail study here. And all of a sudden, he went, wow, that's it. That's it. So from that sketch, we went from that to these thumbnail studies based on that, been the Honda logo in place, some of the little housing developments, some of the things we did in the initial uh, concept sketch. The, so we, they asked me to go a little further with it from, from this variation to something a little bit more deliberate. And then all of a sudden, after a long period of time, came right back and said, you know, this is there's the final logo. There it is. That's that same. I mean, let's do this. Let's get these guys back together again here. Let's do this. It's this. There, there's the final variations on theme. And there's the thumbnail sketch that started it. 
So from that, I went to this, and then um, it just made sense. It was simple, clean, and it delivered the goods, which I think is really unique about your logo work. You can't clutter it up. It has to have a purpose behind it as a very functional, succinct approach, which this did have. So there we are, gang. That was Honda's setup here. So let me move along here. This was fun. Um, getting into things, for example, the Apogee system. This was done for a uh, design firm uh, in the Midwest. Um, just uh, looking at new ways of looking at uh, their logo and refreshing it a little bit. And Apogee, by definition, is the highest peak of the orbit. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's a neat name to have as far as a business is concerned. Um, so I just started developing some concept sketches on both orbital pieces. And they're a very triangulated business. They had a three-pronged business in terms of doing a product retail and some architectural things. So that's that was plate one. Plate two, again, working on the same, same idea, this whole Apogee, this ascension. Or the, the highest peak of the orbit, getting that process in. Notice in playing the name. These sketches were really playing up the fact that the, the by the definition of the term is what really motivated the sketches. So inspiration comes from a variety of sources, folks. And in this case, it was a, the definition of the term apogee. And another series of sketches here. Uh, really stretching it out a little bit and getting a little more universal and becoming much more graphic with it. Uh, again, just a whole lot of sketches here in terms of what if, what if, what if. So let me stop here for a moment. Just making sense, gang? Just helping at all? Uh, describing things okay? I'll just wait for a moment here and kind of pick up on some things. Anybody? It's just intriguing the business. I mean, notice, notice some of the positive, negative things here that are playing into it. For example, some of the things they like, for example, this and this were highlighted here. So... Um, let's move along here. Uh, oops, pick up a, a sketch here. And again, back in a little more definition, maybe a lowercase a, which I didn't really care for. The, the whole idea of the a of being very more triangular. Um, very interesting. Yeah, I agree with that statement. I agree. It makes sense. There we are. Some little apogee studies. But again, now I really started. This was interesting how this thing started to brush out. Notice a really faint looking a, and then the apogee orbit around it. This was one. Um, very to see your range of skill. Well, very kind, uh, David. Um, uh, interesting in terms of, I've been very fortunate to work with great people like yourself and others uh, who taught me an awful lot about uh, being respectful about, uh, you know, and it's not just, um, to me, it's not just cards, it's not buildings, it's not just doing product work. It's it's the whole range of, of interesting things in the, in the interest of design, no matter what the, what the uh, nomenclature is. It's an intriguing journey. So back to this, notice all these sketches, I started out here very, very literal in terms of being very hard graphic and so forth. And all of a sudden, um, just one series of sketches, um, this is one of, of, of several done in the same format. All of a sudden, begin to whisper a little bit. You know, this very, very subtle A apogee, and then the crossing through with the orbit going through it. This is the one that really hit all the cylinders. Um, they re re preferred that that character with more of this kind of a look here with that very simple whisper of the A and, and, the, and the orbit going through it and reaching its summit before it returns back to the perigee, which is the negative side or the lowest side of the orbit. So interesting, uh, it's just fun to look at uh, this, this histrionics here in terms of how the ideas came about and what was the interface and uh, what was the final product. So there we are, there it is there. Uh, it goes back to, let's get these guys out of the way here. Thank you for your patience here. This is for a little residential piece, um, a little study called Winding Creek uh, near uh, the city of um, um, Indianapolis, Indiana. They just wanted a very simple little countryscape in terms of a logo piece. Um, for example, a little river going through it, a little bit of landscape. The actual uh, nomenclature of the uh, um, Winding Winding Creek Village itself. And then again, look back to a plan view. And again, a little theme and an application into a, a monument. This again was one of those programs that I started out doing some logo work. And as a result of doing the logo piece um, itself, I was like, could you do some entryway pieces for some, some landscape features? Absolutely, which, which was the beginning of this family of sketches here. But the final study they picked on was this guy right here, which was just kind of, limp, again, very directional, very much plan view looking, very, very, uh, almost rural, like a, a gathering place. And the, then the stream going through it, and then very, very countrified. They wanted a very countrified look to it. So that delivered a good there. Interesting. Now, let's move along here. Let's uh, kind of switch gears. This was a real, really a lot of fun program. This was one of those deals that comes along once in a lifetime. Um, this is for a bluegrass commercial center or commerce center in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, they had no idea. There's a whole new complex down there in Louisville. Now it's one of the largest distribution centers in the country. But um, they came to me and said, hey, we want a new logo. Uh, we don't have anything in the input. We don't have any idea what we're looking for. So I want you to start looking at certain themes to work with here. Um, bluegrass, 
um, being in Kentucky, a lot of uh, farmland, horse racing, fencing, uh, that kind of character. And I didn't really start there. I just started to put together some pieces on what about, what about, what about, and again, like the, the grass, bluegrass, trying to get that all squared away. So I started there, this is theme one, then into some fencing detail, like, you know, like the horse farms and the Kentucky breeding systems, and getting a little more abstraction in terms of bluegrass and, and blades of grass and putting that put together again, just wider, just opening it all up. Um, this is a long-term project here, and boy, a lot of things done. This way, you gotta separate these guys here. Pardon me. Then a lot more graphic in terms of you know the, the, the universal global system, <clears throat> getting the distribution that they deal with, uh, changing the tempo, the graphics, and just really real fast sketches, making presentations. And by the way, to every time we go through this from one program to another game, uh, it's a matter of sketches, do the work, go back down, make presentations, come back with the input, refine, so back and forth, back and forth to get resolves squared away here. Uh, there's, there's another family of studies here. And now a little bit more now notice, getting into more of state-related things in terms of the actual state uh, location of it in Louisville, um, getting into some of the bluegrass, and just, just and again, the target side of what we're after. Are we looking at things here that are, are going to be um, permissible? Yeah, I think we're starting to hit on some cylinders here. And again, back in the very, very compact sketches, um, very circular in nature, back in the bluegrass. They wanted to play up this grass series for some reason, this, this metal-like look. So that was part of the process there. And I came back into these and back into fencing, for example, gates and details and how that all came together. Again, no, let me stop here for a moment. Notice how it just wanders back and forth. Again, very graphic, very universal, then very specific, then very, very local, then very much farm related. Um, and I'm not one that I never, during the entire process, I never really stopped uh, looking at the possibilities of the variations on theme. I just kept driving it and said, what about this? What if I tried this approach? What if we looked at that approach? I think that's a very important aspect in the design business. So often we get so tuned in, we go back to what uh, um, uh, Dyer was saying earlier, the spectrum of variations, for example. We get so caught up on making fine little tunes here, and again, there's nothing wrong with that, Dyer, or anybody else, please don't misunderstand. But what begins to happen to that is we lose some of the excitement of, well, what do those mistakes begin to lead us to? And I think that's what makes it very, very unique to see. So I'm, I'm a real proponent of just not, it's not a scatter gun. It's not just, it's, there's method to the madness. But the method is, why don't we try this? What about this? What about this aspect? What about the countryside are we looking for? What's important to them? Uh, how are we looking at all these pieces coming together? Now, let's switch gears. That was last for that bluegrass piece. Move along here, gang. Thank you for your patience. This was done for um, a township again. Again, this is an interesting program because in this case, I uh, found myself working with an awful lot of individuals, for example, on the committee that were community related. They've been there for a long, long time. A very restful, very conservative community, which is nice to see. Uh, residential area, a lot of business downtown. It was a very, very strong, thriving community. But they wanted something very substantial and bold looking for this new uh, uh, logo piece of Holland Township. So I started with these thumbnail sketches here, and put it all together, just uh, worked with the block H. Started out of the blocks with that series. I went to these, a little bit more graphic in terms of being really bold in terms of in each one of those windows uh, they had brought up in their conversation that they wanted to have something that, would, that dealt with, for example, uh, maybe it's uh, industry, community, a pastoral and a school and education system. So those those windows are going to be filled in with certain things that uh, they wanted to really feature. And notice, this is the one they kind of started to look at here. Very simple, four blocks, howling in between, it's kind of you know, unite bring it all together. So we on that theme there, went from that theme to, let's see if I got the right, yep, there we are, into these studies. All of a sudden, it just opened up some things. It's kind of fun. And just looking at variations on very, very simple Hellenic, uh, um, elements to column type into some landscaping around it. Uh, very, very straightforward. Some very compass type related or a little variation on theme to get the pieces to come together. That's some slick thinking. Yeah, just interesting things, how it all comes together. Um, just put, putting it all together. Um, and again, um, getting down to, for example, what are they going to feature inside these pieces? What's the character of the age going to look like? Do they want to be very, very bold like this or very, very uh, traditional Greek related column like? Uh, we'll see what unfolds here. So again, the next sketch here, a little more specific in terms of looking at very abstraction form here, which is kind of like in this camera here. This is what they really liked. This one was really kind of a start hit because it was almost like a subliminal approach to it, which I thought was really healthy for them. Uh, a little bit forced in some of these other areas, a bit too much perspective. I tried to make this look like a residential corner of some sort, but uh, it just didn't really hit uh, in all the soldiers, which I think I'm very happy for because they were absolutely right. And this is where we started. This one turned a corner for us right here. And we went into these studies, back again to some little thumbnail sketches and maybe variations on theme. Uh, notice, back and forth, 
specific, opening it up very specific, very compressed, very opened up, uh, and so forth. Very expansive and very contractive. And I think that's part of the design cycle we're working with here to, get, to just get the idea of what we're looking for in terms of final decision. So from there, all these studies led to these family, this family, for example, pardon me a moment, this family of just final studies. I went through the whole idea of saying, okay, all the selections you work with here, here are some very quick freehand sketches on what that, that, that block H, which goes back to, let me find, find uh, let's just work with that guy for a second here. It's together and I put them together. What that block H might begin to look like once we start to put all the pieces that you like within the community to it. So here we are, um, phase one, two, and three. Uh, do we expand it? Do we compress it? Do we get more graphic with it? Is it, is it very linear? Is it more illustra illustrative? What are we looking for here? So uh, there's, there's plate one, and then the plate two. No, no, this is the abstract. They, they really thought this was neat, almost like the, the implied H, but it wasn't really quite as bold as, as that which is kind of interesting. So, but some of these features, some of the features like the aspects of inside the windows, we can incorporate into this piece, which is again, same thing here. Very rural, very, very rural. Again, community related, very much community related. So this, and then notice um, some of the potential identity applications, for example, natural resources, residential assets, senior citizen functions, educational activities, holiday celebrations, social services, community programs, and athletic programs. All these things began to factor in what these themes would look like. Then we went from that into this, back to that same format again. And this was a little bit forced. I think they, they really fell more in line with what this has looked like right here. This is what the, the, the theme of the day, like much more of an abstraction, almost subliminal approach. So that was healthy. So back to those again, given that variation of what do we, what do we went to more of a wreath type, a more, more Greek um, iconic uh, column look. Um, liked it, but not quite as much as the abstract age. There we are, there it is. Then this the final black and white, and again some variations on what the iconic uh, thing might look like. Very tight work here, and last but not least, there it is. Those are the final pieces they put the, put together. They finally ended up, I think, with this family of shapes right here. It was rural, and again community related, and that was it. Just interesting things. Um, uh, again, that, that abstract age and then plugging in some of the pieces as we're through the process here. So there we are again, interesting things. A lot of uh, a lot of sketches, as I said in the very beginning of the stream, this is but a tip of the iceberg in terms of what has taken place. I mean, I pulled through some of the sketches and uh, my goodness, there are thousands of just idea studies, for example, that went through the entire process here. We're bringing this thing together, just endless. So I tried to kind of condense it down to give you some sort of range. Um, <laughs> yeah, Phil and she absolutely killed a lot of trees in my lifetime, no doubt. Uh, Shadow. Let me stop there for a second. Has this, has this been helpful, gang, in terms of insight? Um, we're going to buy a tree farm. That's not a bad idea. Uh, turn it a lumber yard, turn it a pulp factory. We got it made there, gang. Let me just kind of stop for a second there, gang. The Dave and the Shadow, um, Die Hard, Doug, if you're still there. Um, I hope this is uh, making some sense for you guys. Making sense? Uh, really interesting things in terms of... Uh, of approach, and it's not a, it's not an automobile, it's not a, it's not a star citizen piece of machinery, uh, it's not an interior uh, piece at all. It's just, it's again, to me, one of the most important aspects of the design process is learning how to apply your thinking processes into different subject matters. Um, I've often said this, and I think from both from a teaching point of view and in public speaking engagements, you know, the process, the the, the subjects we'll see will change. But the process of getting there should never, never change. It should be constant. It, it should always be in motion. You're always looking at dirt, uh, certain things to look at. Um, um, yeah, it, it's logo conceptual work is just terrific uh, material. So thanks very much, Shadow. Uh, Dave, thank you so much. Are you using any reference ideas when trying? No, I'm not. Using, honestly, Dave, I, I've never really been a habit of, uh, of doing that. Um, I don't use a reference at all in terms of um, the only reference I get is the input coming in from the faculty or the group of individuals I'm dealing with. Our community is very strong in this. Our, we really underscore this. And I'm just verbalizing what the ideas might be, and they become my sources of resource. So I don't really go back and go and uh, do an internet search on, on, in this case, for example, into obelisks or, uh, or trees or landscape or architecture. I just start cranking at it here based on the input that I get from the group. And then I'll just I'll wrap it up with this one. I think this is the last one we're going to go through. Yeah, this is really good uh, to go through. Um, this was done for the uh, uh, 
Holland Springfield group, and one of their themes in the community was to get into an obelisk. They wanted a very strong, powerful obelisk. Hey, how you doing, Stephen Nemo? Good to see you, man. Uh, thank you so much for joining forces here. We're about ready to wrap it up, and instead of going through a review, hopefully get a chance to catch the streamer. It's just all about getting into logo conceptual study work, working with client bases, uh, um, you know, Nemo. A little bit different approach from the thinking process here, but it still applies from the design point of view that we're dealing with over the last few sessions here. Um, but this was uh, done for Holland Township. And again, uh, first series meetings with the township representatives as a very, very large group of individuals that really had really strong feelings about what this obelisk represented for them as a landmark, as an area to work with. Um, it's amazing that you can generate so much with this. Um, well, uh, thanks very much, David. Um, don't be amazed. Uh, you're doing the same thing in your category, I'm sure. Um, what's interesting about it all, the, uh, the, the work that you're doing, um, is um, over the course of time. Yeah, I'll rewatch it. Uh, a lot of, no, no problem, Nemo. Good to have you on board. But uh, Dave, to address your question here, uh, you generate ideas based on the input you get, and I think that's the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm really famous for asking a lot of questions. Is it this? Is it that? Do you feel this is a, a right approach? Do you think that might be applicable? You know, what do we negate? What do we accent? Um, and they begin process. They, they begin to generate conceptual, concept, for me, conceptual ideas. So I can generate ideas. And once I get into a pattern, for example, you'll see it here. You've seen it hopefully throughout the entire presentation today. But more specifically, when I go in there, for example, and to, to, start to look at all these pieces, um, I do not, uh, I hope I can say this and don't misunderstand the context. I don't hesitate. I mean, I just go. Um, maybe it's this, it's all, it's short, maybe it's wide. Maybe I add this element. Maybe I change gears and go from uh, grasses to fencing. Maybe it's a uh, metalscape. Maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's brick. Maybe it's hard edge. Maybe it's very sculptural. Uh, I, I just go through a whole variety of lexicon thinkings in my mind and go from it from there. And then we begin to hopefully generate these ideas. And when I take them into presentation pieces, I make that very carefully clear to people I'm working with. We started this process last week when we met with these objectives in mind. Now you'll see some of those objectives being taken care of here, but also in the middle of this whole process, I began to see some things in those objectives that we were not addressing. So I went and added some of those sketches as well for the welfare of making certain that when you hire me, you're gonna get the broad base of ideation and I respect your insight, but I also want you to know that as a result of respecting your insight, I'll take the insight and begin to expand it and become much more universal with it. And so you can see what the possibilities are. Um, I've never stated I'll be right. I've never stated I'll be wrong. I'm hoping I just deliver the goods. And as we said earlier in the program, and I think Dave, you responded to it, we're only as good as the people we work with and respect. And if we don't respect those individuals, we're not going to get very far. I work with people at design staff, for example, that were just absolutely incredibly obnoxious in terms of me, myself, and I. That, that, that just does not uh, carry in the water with me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really prone to think I'm the least... The most I'm the least important I'm the most least important person in the room when I go into a design process and then shadow can be my my witness here I don't get in there and say well I I to me when someone uses a context I and that's dictatorship what I love to think of is let's look at why don't we take it to well how come why why are we not why are we 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 notice that's leadership what t tell me what you're after what do you want to look at? Uh, what's what's the drive here? What are we looking for? So again, sort of the diatribe here, but again, just wrapping it up here. This was done for Springfield Township. Very strong in this very monumental, very tall. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you at the end of this presentation, I'll tell you what happened as a result of going through this process. It was absolutely amazing to me. I was shocked, um, positively shocked. It was just fun. Um, so I started here with some very simple generic sketches. And the obelisk, and they, they loved the fencing detail. For some odd reason, they had a fencing detail around the community that that was just too great. It's very uh, uh, powder-coated metal, black metal. So I said, now let's add a little bit of fencing to it and then some landscape work. So it started there. Then a little bit more specific now, getting into some of the monumental pieces like Holland, um, Holland Springfield with banner systems on the actual piece itself. Uh, again, the fencing, some of the landscape piece around it, and then the nomenclature of, of um, um, elements around the actual obelisk itself. Then we went to this. Now, as I started, I started switching gears. Notice I came out of the blocks kind of slow, maybe in first gear. Then all of a sudden, went from first gear to third gear. Then all of a sudden, we just put it in overdrive and said, okay, let's, let's get some serious things down here with this whole process and begin to really crank out some interesting thumbnail sketches here. So this is the beginning of the whole process of putting it all together. Um, so that was one family of sketches here. Now, now things started to hit here. They started to look at things like, this is nice, uh, heraldic shield, the monument, the fencing, the monument, heraldic shield. They liked that approach. So uh, that was a real healthy set of sessions to work with. 
But interesting in that conversation about this, one of the board members uh, spoke up and said, well, you know, there's, a, there's another element we were really, for, or Holland kind of implies we're kind of a Dutch-based community. Would it be interesting to see if we could kind of put some windmill graphics in this thing and maybe add a windmill to the actual piece itself? So all of a sudden that turned a whole new leaf in terms of conceptual thinking here, which I kind of just, um, I thought, well, that's interesting. That could be a lot of fun to work with. So in the next series of sketches, we'll see when we start taking a look at this obelisk and combining a very abstract windmill piece to it to give it a little bit of definition. So here we go. There we are. There's number one. Um, and look at all of a sudden I'm getting very linear with this a very, very um, minimalistic approach uh, to the, notice I started here to this and all of a sudden that conversation with the windmills. All of a sudden, ah, this is interesting. Getting something very, very subtle like this, very simple, very minimalistic. You can do a lot of neat things with that process. So that's a, that was the first set of sketches we dealt with. Uh, notice it was all obelisk here, fence, and then just being very, very formal with it, almost shield-like. And then all of a sudden, nah, the windmill opened up some things here, kind of get more of a free wheel, almost like an illustration look to it. So that there, and then we went to this, a little more generic, head-on, for example, uh, with the obelisk as being part of the, the windmill itself. Um, so there we are, another set of sketches here, uh, variation on themes, just laying things eyes. again, just ideas down, notice, very strong obelisk and a little windmill next to it, uh, nothing really set here in pattern yet, but then we move to this, right back to those abstractions again, just really fun stuff, this is a fun, that, that phase, that, that conversation that gentleman made in terms of adding a windmill, really opened up the doors about having it became it's, it was almost fun for me from the very beginning but the fun part all of a sudden came back and oh how do you combine an obelisk and a windmill to almost a greek icon into a very dutch icon piece it's just amazing how it all began to think you know i thought well it's gonna be a real challenge so uh, i just went after it and hopefully put some sketches down and uh it's just that's to fate plate seven theme sketches one after the other and then the sketch eight and again notice really playing this whole thing up and again, very expansive piece here business related the location of at northbound uh, windmill obelisk uh, holland springfield established in, in, in such and such a year um back again to that and then last but not least coming in the last sketch here the last couple of sketches uh, a more specific back to pencil again just real, real loose loose studies and uh, there it is there uh, and then the last piece we did is a much more abstraction and notice it went from very very windmill related to almost, almost uh, abstraction and i just didn't care for this last family nor did they which i'm glad and very happy to hear about that so this is where that starts and that's where we ended here and I, I, I just thought that'd be kind of a nice little change of pace today to go through some of the things we've done here for the logo uh, process and as i said uh, earlier uh, shadow and uh, pardon me uh, nemo when i started the processor today i went through the whole idea uh it's a real journey. You got that right. Uh, tremendous journey. It's, uh, and not, not these sketches are tremendous, but the actual the journey of uh, going through the process of working with people over the course of time and developing a whole variety of logos for a variety of purposes. Some of these some of these pieces are corporate, some are non-corporate, some small, some large, some individuals, uh, a lot of community work and so forth. I've been very fortunate to do a lot of uh, real variety of work in terms of different areas in the past and hope to keep that active here as we move on here. But uh, uh, I think the, the, the real key today for me was to go back and review um, even some of the design thinking process behind some of the putting together logo because it's a different science altogether. It has to be succinct, has to be direct, has to be easy to manufacture, has to be recognizable, and above all else, has to be elastic. Uh, it's a reason why, for example, if you took, uh, if you took the, uh, the swoosh, uh, the Coca-Cola, uh, and left the swoosh alone, you'd know that was Coca-Cola. Those are the kind of things that we're looking at here that, that become timeless. So I'm really appreciative of the fact you stayed with me for this period of time here, gang. Let me just kind of uh, be quiet here for a moment. And uh, really, any, any closing commentary? Has this been helpful in some cases? Uh, for example, like the Dave and, and the Die Hard and individuals and, and Doug, you've been watching along here. Please, any feedback at all? Uh, really, really appreciate it here. And Captain Nemo, uh, great to have you on board. I hope you have a chance to um, uh, review this thing later on today. And by the way, did you get those sketches I sent you of the, the, the Manta Long Range Bomber uh, uh, Phase 7 series. I hope, I hope, I hope got them. Um, anybody, please, any commentary in closing here? Just been a lot of fun, gang. Neat stuff. And while I'm waiting for some responses here, I think I'll give you a little bit of insight what's coming up after the holiday, as I said uh, in the beginning, beginning of the stream. Uh, so thank you, Mel. I appreciate it, uh, Dave. Uh, it's always good to have you on board, and uh, I hope it's just not the last time you'll join us here. And um, and again, you're, uh, I forget, where about you? Are you located in California again, Dave? I'm not sure. Is it California or Florida? I'm not, I'm not uh, maybe I'm mistaken on both counts. But uh, really appreciate the, taking the time to join us here today, Dave. Big, big help. <clears throat> 
But uh, while I'm waiting here for some additional input, um, after the holiday, I'm going to start doing a lot more. Uh, what I refer to as a really far-reaching conceptual stuff. Oh, you're in Philadelphia. Hey, that's great. Uh, super, David. Thanks so much. Really nice color variants, and especially I like the style of the windmills they show. Yeah, a lot of movement. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, and you know what it was. Uh, but I think after the holiday, maybe starting next Tuesday or Thursday, I've been doing a lot of research and looking into, for example, uh, getting in some empathic, really uh, stretch shapes, and not so much speed forms, but for things like for hydrofoils and, and uh, racing boats, cigarette boats, um, and using abstract empathy to kind of use that as a tool to develop a new shape or new vocabulary of forms for not only boats, but maybe product design, uh, automotive stuff. So I'll be opening up a little bit more of that thing uh, and doing a lot more uh, of those types of programs after the holiday. I'm also going to take some time to really, uh, do some really interesting uh, maybe specific illustrations of old Ferraris and uh, some, some classic machines like old Rolls Royces um, and that type of work. Um, we're looking for, I heard boats, yeah, boats. Yeah, it's gonna be some interesting things like uh, uh, cigarette boats and some hydrofoil studies. Uh, much, much more abstraction. Uh, Really interesting, really interesting uh, empathic sketches. We put a strike down, throw some sketches through it, and I've been doing a little bit of timing and uh, getting, getting ready for that uh, uh, next week and opening up a whole new category of things to do on my stream system here. Um, but um, I, I think it's just, uh, it's really, I, what I try to do from stream to stream is make it unique and different every single time. So I'm not creating cars all the time or product all the time. I just change as much as I can. I go from tone ten, ten paper to marker uh, to, to this kind of work and so forth. And uh, just to keep the variety active so we'll, uh, we'll get some good feedback. Architecture, interior space. So I'll be doing a lot of that uh, coming up here in the next uh, few weeks and so forth. And also while I'm at it too, uh, please stay tuned. We're going to have a meeting tomorrow in-house uh, for our... Uh, uh, apparel line we're adding some new uh, t-shirt graphics some automotive stuff and once we get that set up we're going to start adding some things like some some of the star citizen things we've done like the manta ray for example um the monocar a lot of different processes we've dealt with in the past the g12 series we're going to go right back to that and get it on some graphics and either a poster form or a shirt form so stay after it we're going to have a good meeting tomorrow and getting it out all started and lined up and get it on the website um in the investigation of new forms looking forward to the, yeah it'll be a lot of fun the new forms i, I think you'll find it'll be interesting dave because i'm, I'm going to start using a process that's not very well not very well broadcasted but it's such a powerful tool it's called empathic sketching and it's just a whole different way of looking at certain things that can you begin to convert into new things for example especially in your area you're in architecture is that correct uh, dave i hope i'm correct on that architectural student so once you get into this whole idea of empathy, it opens up all these doors of newness. And I'll go back to that, uh, uh, maybe the last uh, question. Someone asked about you know, the, the, the variety of, uh, yeah, it, was, it generates so much with uh, Dave's question earlier on. It was amazing that you can generate so much with just the info given to you. I'm amazed. Well, I think a lot of the information, too, is, for example, that when you, that information opens up an awful lot, Dave. And, oh, thank you for your answer. That, op that information and that, that expansion of creativity opens up when you start getting away from traditional thinking. And traditional thinking is a great, it's, it's helpful, but sometimes you get into the same old, I do the same old thing, to do the same old thing, do this, and it kind of becomes not, um, not non-viable, but it just begins to flatten out a little bit. Whereas empathic sketches are a means by which opens up doors of newness. And you can use a variety of things. I think that we're gonna start developing more, more conversation with that uh, future streams to get into empathic studies about how they apply to both boats, interior space, product design, architecture, aircraft you name it uh it just it's universal so i think you'll love it dave so once again gang thank you so much for joining me today uh great uh, this has been a lot of fun to bring out the old portfolio and i think this is about maybe one tenth of some of the sketches i've developed for logo work over the course of time it's just interesting uh creature <laughs> traditional thinking makes you a creature of habit you're absolutely right david and that's what we don't want to do and that's what i don't want to do here on my tuesday thursday presentation become a creature of doing the same old thing over and over again the variety to me is interesting, especially when I've got an audience such as uh, what you are involved here today. The, the cross section has been terrific, and uh, your input is uh, extremely important to me, and I'm glad you're uh, on board, Dave, as well as Nemo, uh, Die Hard, Doug, Shadow. Everything helps. It's really, really been very helpful. Um, well, last but not least, if you have a moment, please uh, gang, take a good look at my website. Um, Jim at drcontrast.com. Uh, on that, you'll find my Instagram approach, my YouTube approach. Um, 
uh, Twitch account is on that. That'd be a lot of fun to kind of put that piece together. And also there's a nice drawing program on there that kind of gives you some introduction and some basic drawing skills that might be of some assistance to you. And then again, uh, Dave, anybody else, Die Hard, if you've got subject matter that you want me to work on or I'll maybe help you with, or you're having some difficulty with certain things, I'm not implying you are, but if there are things you want me to work on to kind of help clarify some things for you, drop me a note at my email address at jim at drcontrast.com. We're more than happy to look at that and then maybe put together a program for you and let you know we're going to bring it up on the, on the Twitch on Tuesday, Thursdays, and we'll take it from there. Really cool, gang. So once again, thank you so much. I hope all of you have a great, safe holiday weekend, and we look forward to seeing you next Tuesday after the Advent. And again, thank you for joining me. Again, Jim at DrContrast.com. Drop me a note or email, for example. Uh, Jim, uh, pardon me, uh, uh, email, uh, email address is Jim at DrContrast.com. The website, DrContrast.com. And last but not least, uh, I, I'm really interested in kind of opening this. I, I do a lot of commission work, too. So I'm interested in doing some commission pieces. If you want some things done, for example, illustration form, uh, let me know. I'll be more than happy to do it. If you know someone who wants illustration work done from a commission point of view, please let them know I'm available. I'd love to do that kind of work. I'm, I always have been active in that area. I'd love to do it. And uh, so uh, please uh, pass on the network. And also, uh, if you like what you see here today, pass it on to your friends so they can kind of join and follow us on uh, Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday. So, again, all the best, gang. And I always close with this because I think it's the most important aspect of the entire presentation. Never forget to ever remember to dare to be great because you are. Thanks very much, gang. Take care and all the very best. Thank you. Have a great holiday. See you next week.